The life and sad ending of Wanda Jackson. Wanda Jackson was born Wanda LaVon Jackson on October 20, 1937, in Maud, Oklahoma, U.S. Wanda Jackson was only halfway through high school when, in 1954, country singer Hank Thompson heard her on an Oklahoma City radio show and asked her to record with his band, the Brazos Valley Boys. By the end of the decade, Jackson had become one of America's first major female country and rockabilly singers. Jackson was born in Oklahoma, but her father Tom himself a country singer who quit because of the Depression moved the family to California in 1941. He bought Wanda her first guitar two years later, gave her lessons, and encouraged her to play piano as well. In addition, he took her to see such acts as Tex Williams, Spade Cooley, and Bob Wills, which left a lasting impression on her young mind. Tom moved the family back to Oklahoma City when his daughter was 12 years old. In 1952, she won a local talent contest and was given a 15-minute daily show on KLPR. The program, soon up to 30 minutes, lasted throughout Jackson's high school years. It's here that Thompson heard her sing. Jackson recorded several songs with the Brazos Valley Boys, including You Can Have My Love, a duet with Thompson's bandleader, Billy Gray. The song, on the Decca label, became a national hit, and Jackson's career was off and running. She had wanted to sign with Capitol, Thompson's label, but was turned down, so she signed with Decca instead. Jackson insisted on finishing high school before hitting the road. When she did, her father came with her. Her mother made and helped design Wanda's stage outfits. I was the first one to put some glamour in the country music fringe dresses, high heels, long earrings, Jackson said of these outfits. When Jackson first toured in 1955 and 1956, she was placed on a bill with none other than Elvis Presley. The two hit it off almost immediately. Jackson said it was Presley, along with her father, who encouraged her to sing rockabilly. In 1956, Jackson finally signed with Capitol, a relationship that lasted until the early 70s. Her recording career bounced back and forth between country and rockabilly. She did this by often putting one song in each style on either side of a single. Jackson cut the rockabilly hit Fujiyama Mama in 1958, which became a major success in Japan. Her version of Let's Have a Party, which Elvis had cut earlier, was the U.S. Top 40 pop hit for her in 1960, after which she began calling her band the Party Timers. A year later, she was back in the country top 10 with Right or Wrong and in the middle of a heartache. In 1965, she topped the German charts with Santa Domingo, sung in German. In 1966, she hit the U.S. Top 20 with the box it came in and tears will be the chaser for your wine. Jackson's popularity continued through the end of the decade. Jackson toured regularly, was twice nominated for a Grammy, and was a big attraction in Las Vegas from the mid-50s into the 70s. She married IBM programmer Wendell Goodman in 1961, and instead of quitting the business as many women singers had done at the time Goodman gave up his job in order to manage his wife's career. He also packaged Jackson's syndicated TV show, Music Village. In 1971, Jackson and her husband became Christians, which she says saved their marriage. She released one gospel album on Capitol in 1972, Praise the Lord, before shifting to the Murr label for three more gospel albums. In 1977, she switched again, this time to Word Records, and released another two. In the early 80s, Jackson was invited to Europe to play rockabilly and country festivals and to record. She's since been back numerous times. More recently, American country artists Pam Tillis, Jan Brown, and Rosie Flores have acknowledged Jackson as a major influence. In 1995, Flores released a rockabilly album, Rockabilly Philly, and invited Jackson, her longtime idol, to sing two duets on it with her. Jackson embarked on a major U.S. tour with Flores later that year. 
It was her first secular tour in this country since the 70s, not to mention her first time back in a nightclub atmosphere. Jackson returned to the studio in 2010 to begin work on a new album. Produced by Jack White and featuring a band comprised of the White Stripes frontman, his wife Karen Elson, various Rackenders, My Morning Jacket's Carl Bromel, and a host of others, The Party Ain't Over arrived in early 2011. Jackson's 31st studio album, 2012's Unfinished Business, was produced by Justin Towns Earl and featured original material as well as covers of songs by Woody Guthrie, Etta James, Bobby Womack, and others. In 1955, Jackson briefly dated Elvis Presley while on tour with him. She married former IBM programmer Wendell Goodman in 1961, who served as her manager. He died on May 21, 2017. The couple had two children. As of the 2000s she lives in Oklahoma City.